Hey guys, what's up and welcome back. If you're new to the channel, I'm a designer, entrepreneur and lover of all things tech. Today, we're going to be talking about the new Apple Watch 6. I've been road testing this thing for a little over three months now since its release and I've been using it for everything from meditation to tracking my to-do lists and I wanted to give you guys a pretty comprehensive review which covers some of the key things that I think you need to know before buying. So with that in mind, let's get into it. So first things first, let's talk about the design of this watch. This is actually my first Apple Watch and one of the big reasons for that is that I just didn't feel like the design of the previous watches had got to a point yet where they were streamlined enough. The Watch 6 is definitely the best designed in my opinion. I went for the 44mm Wi-Fi only watch in space grey, which I think is definitely the best option to go for. From a price perspective, the aluminium case is the cheapest option by far, and because this is something I'm probably going to upgrade anyway in a few years, I didn't feel it made much sense splashing out on a stainless steel design. Similarly, I didn't feel I needed the cell version of the watch, because I just can't see a situation where I'm going to need to make calls or apply to things through data when I don't already have my phone with me. And you can download tons of entertainment in advance anyway. I also didn't want to add another $5 to $10 onto my subscription tariff each month when I can just tether from my phone. Next up, we're going to talk about the different strap options. When I ordered my watch, I wanted to try Apple's new Solo Loop, so that's the original band that came with this watch. I'll be honest though, while I liked the idea, I really didn't like these bands. I just found it didn't look good on my wrist, and I don't like how hard it is to get on and off your wrist as well. The other important thing to mention here is that because the solo loop is one single piece, I found it gets really sweaty when exercising. And this is coming from someone that's not a very sweaty person generally. In contrast though, I also got hold of two Nike sports bands. The first one is in an all white band, and this is one you can't actually get anymore. So if you're lucky enough to find one on eBay, then definitely try and grab it as they're really, really rare. The second one I got is in all black. Anyway, both of these bands are so much better than the Solo Loop because they feature holes within the design. I don't sweat in these at all and I can change the tightness depending on whether I'm doing exercise or just wearing them throughout the day. So in my opinion, the Nike Sports Band is definitely the way to go. So let's dive into the fitness side of things next, as let's be honest, like most other people, that's probably the main reason you want to get an Apple Watch. The first thing you need to know is that Apple's inbuilt health app is brilliant. It has three rings which correspond to calories burned, exercise minutes spent throughout the day, as well as your stand target as well. Now each of these targets can be defined by your age, weight and general fitness status, but you can also customize these targets as well to make sure you're getting the most out of things. When it comes to fitness, there are three main activities that I use my watch for. The first is running, which I generally use Strava for. Strava is a brilliant third-party app that allows you to capture and share your fitness progression with others and there's a great community aspect to it as well. If you use Strava, it automatically links back to your Apple Health app so you can still close your rings using third-party apps. Another thing I use my watch for is golf. Now I know this will be a niche topic so I'll keep this really brief but there's a brilliant free app called Hole19 and it works really well. What's great about it is that you can use it on your phone as well for added details. And then finally, the other thing I use my watch for is surfing. I use an app called Dawn Patrol, but because of lockdown here in the UK, I've actually only been able to use this once. But when I did, it worked really well and it's a great way of tracking your surf sessions. Related to fitness apps, obviously the Apple Watch 6 has improved heart monitoring as well. In addition to the standard heart rate measurements, the Watch 6 has the capability to take ECGs, which is pretty cool. And of course, the biggest new feature was the addition of blood oxygen levels, which ironically given COVID is actually a really timely addition. Being able to check your oxygen levels regularly is something I didn't think I'd use much, but I've actually found it really, really useful. Very much related to health and fitness is the ability to listen to music, podcasts or other media when you're exercising. When it comes to music, I'm very much a user of Spotify and not Apple Music. Up until recently, the Spotify experience in the Apple Watch was extremely limited, but Spotify have recently sorted this out so you can now listen to music when you don't have an internet connection by syncing songs directly to your watch. If I'm not listening to music, they'll generally just fire up an audiobook or podcast. I use the Audible app by Amazon for different audiobooks, 
and here again you can sync specific books to the watch. Similarly with podcasts you can do the same thing using Apple's native podcast app. The one thing to point out here though is that to change songs as you're running you can't currently do this via voice control unless you have an internet connection. Basically there's no access to Siri at all unless you have an internet connection which feels like a big miss from Apple, especially if all you want to do is lower the volume via Siri. Next up, we're gonna talk about mindfulness and meditation. There's two apps I use in this space, and to be honest, it's like the watch was made for these types of apps. The first is Apple's native Breathe app, which is such a simple little app. At regular points throughout the day, it basically just reminds you to take stock for a couple of minutes and take a short breath-based meditation. The second app I use is called Calm, which is another mindfulness app which I'd also really recommend. When it comes to messaging on the watch, there's obviously Apple's native message app which works really well, where you can read and reply to messages, and you can also set up and create your own emoji, which is pretty cool. But what's a little disappointing on the watch is the WhatsApp experience. You can receive and reply to WhatsApp messages, but you can't go back and see past messages, which is a little annoying if you want to quickly reference something. There's also a cool feature called walkie talkie that you can use to speak with people quickly. I thought it would be a bit of a gimmick, but it's actually quite good fun. Next up, we're gonna talk about productivity apps. Starting with email, the mail app is pretty good and simple to use, but let's be honest, you're not gonna really do email from your wrist. The native calendar app is actually pretty poor and doesn't let you view in a weekly or a monthly format so I rarely use it. What I do use lots though is Todoist, so if you haven't seen any of my other productivity videos, I'll leave links to them here. But Todoist is basically a to-do list app that lets you quickly check off or add tasks as you remember them. It's really good and I use it on the Mac and iPad as well. The other app I use a lot on my watch is Stocks, where I keep track of all of my investments. The app from Apple is really well designed and the interface is so clean. It even shows you the stock charts as well, which is a really nice touch. So apart from setting myself alarms and also setting bedtime reminders, that's pretty much it when it comes to productivity. Ultimately, I just don't think the watch is ever going to be designed for productivity. So if you're thinking of using it for that, then I definitely reconsider why you want to watch in the first place. So when it comes to other things I like about the Apple Watch, there's obviously watch faces. The selection and customization options on this is brilliant, and I love just tinkering around with the different complications that are shown on the face. I personally generally use the infograph face, as this is where I feel like I have the most data available, but I also have the Mickey Mouse one on standby as well, because, well, why wouldn't you? You can also share different watch faces with friends and family as well. With Watch 6, Apple has also introduced a new hand washing feature, which I thought I would hate, but I actually really like. It basically just provides a countdown for when you should stop washing your hands, which is obviously really important at the moment. One of my absolute favorite features of the new watch is actually noise levels. As someone who's always really conscious of making sure I'm not damaging my ears, this is actually such a nice feature, and I find myself using it quite a lot. And then finally, there's obviously the weather app itself, which as you'd expect, has been really nicely designed. You get info such as air pollution and UV levels for the day, which are not things that I would have checked before, but now that I have a watch, I find myself doing it regularly. So guys, in summary, there's loads more I could say about the new Apple Watch 6, but these are just some of the key things that I would consider if you're looking to pick one up. The design is awesome, the battery life is amazing, and most of the apps that I would use work really well with the exception of Siri and the calendar app. If you're someone who's conscious about your mental health or fitness, then I would definitely recommend getting the Apple Watch. If you're someone looking to use it for productivity reasons, then I'd say it's probably not a worthwhile purchase. But that's just my opinion, and I'm really keen to hear what you guys think about the new Apple Watch, so let me know in the comments below. As usual, I'll put a link down in the description to the watch I have, as well as links to all my other gear so you guys can check it out in your own time. Hopefully you enjoyed the video and remember to subscribe for more.